give you a demonstration and a presentation about uh, a code that we've written called iCosmo, which is an interactive uh, cosmological package. So we wrote it some time back, um, and we're now working on uh, some different uh, part of code, but I can show you. Uh, the code uh, is meant to be a tool for calculating a number of uh, cosmological quantities, and in particular, we used it for uh, lensing calculations, and I'll be focusing on the general cosmology um, computations as well as um, the, um, uh, and then focusing more on the lensing calculations. So if you're already online, you can connect to this uh, website, icosmo.ethz.ch. Maybe I'll write it on the board. Maybe I can write it here. I don't know if you can see in the back, I can write it bigger here. icosmo.ethz.ch, okay? And you can connect to this. So it has, a, on this web page, uh, there are not only access to the code, but there's also, as you'll see later, a lot of uh, documentation uh, and uh, resources for about lensing and other cosmological, cosmological probes. So we did this some time ago. Some of it is a bit old, but I think some of it is still very, very valuable. So I'll focus on the cosmological, uh, cosmological code itself. So you can download the code. Uh, it's written in IDL, so I don't know if you have access to IDL in your institute. You can also try uh, running it with a public version of IDL. So IDL is an um, interactive data language, um, which is, a, not, which is a, something one needs to buy, we need to buy license for. But there's also a public version called GDL. Uh, and uh, and uh, you can try and make it run on, on, uh, on GDL as well. Uh, however, you don't need this. Uh, and in, in this uh, demonstration, I'll show you uh, that we don't need the source code itself. You can go directly uh, via web browser and then do a lot of the calculations directly interactively on the web, which is very convenient. Uh, if you quickly need some quantity, some angular diameter distance, a Hubble parameter, or a lensing power spectrum, a power spectrum, you can get it like this directly on the web. So if you go to this web page and click on Cosmology Tool, as I said, there's a, you can either download the code or use your web browser. So we'll go to the web browser. OK, and then basically, we can follow different steps. So there are different layers to the code. The first one is um, basically the input for the cosmological model that we're interested in. So here, there's already some preset values about the cosmological parameters. So this is the omega matter, omega dark energy, omega baryons. So these are the density of matter, dark energy, and baryons. This is the Hubble constants in unit of 100 kilometers per second per megaparsec. That's the slope of the primordial um, power spectrum. Sigma is the amplitude of the fluctuations. And W0 and WA are uh, parameters describing the equation of state of dark energy and its evolution. We will, later on, when you study perturbation with Anjan, you will get uh, more information about some of the parameters you haven't seen. So you've already seen omega matter, that's omega dark energy, or omega lambda, if we're in a lambda uh, universe, that's omega barrier, you know this. That's the Hubble um, uh, constant, as I said, in these dimensionless units. And this you haven't seen yet, uh, but this you've already, we've already discussed, these are the two uh, dark energy equation of state parameters. Okay. So then here you can select what you want to be, what you want calculated. So as I said, there are three layers. Uh, the first layer is a calculation of basic cosmological quantities, like distances, the Hubble parameter, the power spectrum, the matter power spectrum, and that's always calculated. Uh, and then there are more advanced ones, so there are uh, observables, so things that can be uh, measured, ST for instance, uh, and given these characteristics, uh, and then it calculates the expected errors uh, that the survey will provide with one of the probes on these parameters. So it's a very con convenient thing. It's done using a formalism called the Fisher matrix, uh, and we'll try to do it uh, a bit later. It takes longer to calculate. There's a lot of much more calculation there. It's a bit slower. So I'll demonstrate this at the end if, it, if, it, if it's not too slow. So once we've selected this, we can do begin calculations. Uh-oh. That's not good. 
Okay, so I need Anjan to log me in. Apologize. Hi. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. So we need to be logged it, logged back in. Oh. It's, it logged me out. We'll see this in more detail later. This is for the weak lensing um, statistics. You, so you need a redshift range of the galaxies used for the weak lensing, some range in um, uh, wave numbers, whether we include nonlinear correction to the power spectrum, and then the range of L. Remember, L is the multiple moment that gives basically the scale. Uh, of the fluctuation, so it's, it's, it's uh, proportional to inverse angular scale. Okay, and then uh, we can choose a survey, let's say LSST for instance here. Okay, and now it's calculating all these uh, statistics. So. Uh, typically, it takes less than a minute if we don't ask for a Fisher matrix. If we ask for a Fisher matrix, it takes a minute or so, so we wait. Very good. And then we get this page. And then below, you can plot which of the distances you want to plot. So this is, for instance, the angular diameter distance. You're reminded about the cosmological model that we are considering here. You can also change it. And you can um, look at, for instance, another uh, 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 distance cosmological distance, that's the luminosity distance, and there you basically plot the two of them together. You can uh, change the color, you know, anything you want. And then you can download this plot. You can also modify on the left, you can modify the x-axis, the y-axis, make it log, and, and so on. Okay, so in, this is the matter power spectrum. It includes Nonlinear correction coming from nonlinear perturbations. Uh, but we can also plot the linear power spectrum too. So again, Anjan will describe all this. So this quantity shows the amount of perturbations, of density perturbations, of matter density perturbations uh, as a function of scale. Again, this is inverse angular scale. This is the um, um, wave number, the Fourier wave number. And you have a typical um, behavior like this in lambda CDM models uh, with a rise, a peak, and then a decay like this. And Anjan will explain to you where this typical behavior comes from. Yep. In data files, there are uh, maybe uh, 29 data points. Can we get more data points? Um, not sure. Maybe in some of the more advanced quantities. I can't remember. We can check. Otherwise, of course, with the code, you can get anything you want. Um, yeah, I'll check later, not sure. And here, what you can see is indeed the nonlinear power spectrum. So when you add nonlinear uh, structure formation, then you get more power on small scales. These are the structures that are formed already on small scales, and that increase the power on small angular scales. OK, you can also change the redshift of this power spectrum, so this is at redshift zero, you can do it at redshift, I don't know, redshift one, for instance. Okay, and, and you get this. And, and it's calculated uh, in the background, uh, remotely actually in the server at ETH and returns the result. In this case, this is done using what is called fitting functions, which are fits to numerical simulation based on physical um, approximations and considerations. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and that returns the evaluation of these fitting functions as a function of the different quantities. Also, there's a number, several integrals that need to be evaluated. Okay, so that's the power spectrum, the matter power spectrum. Okay, and then we can move to the next layer, uh, which is the observables. So these are all quantities which have nothing to do with obs observations, right? They're fundamental quantities, typically in three dimensions or having to do with a background expansion. Now we can uh, look at the next layer, which is the observables. And this is, for instance, the lensing power spectrum for this cosmology. So this shows the amount of, uh, in this case, weak lensing fluctuations 
as a function of angular scale or L multiple moment. So this corresponds to large scale, small scales, and this is the amplitude. This is a bit like it's plotted in the same kind of convention as the cosmic microwave background power spectrum. You remember the, um, the power spectrum for the CMB with its wiggle. So it's the same thing, except that in this case, we're not plotting the, uh, the fluctuations, the angular fluctuations of the cosmic microwave background temperature. We're plotting the, um, the uh, power of the uh, weak lensing uh, fluctuations, if you wish. Okay. And again, you can plot several. You can change the, the different bins and so on. Now, one thing you can do uh, is you can show now that we've selected the survey, in this case, LSST, which is a future survey, we can also show the errors that we expect for this survey. So that means that LSST is expected uh, to give us a measurement of this power spectrum with a precision. And this is a one sigma precision uh, given by these errors. So you see the, the, er the measurement will be excellent in many bin in this case. Uh, and of course, this assumes that uh, there are no systematic effects. These are simply the statistical errors that we expect for this, for this survey. And again, you can change the color if you want to make it more readable. And again, you can always download the output and also download the figure as well if you want to use it for a talk or something like this. And here is a reminder of the uh, survey characteristic. So this is the area of the survey, the uh, redshift um, errors, the median redshift of the survey, the number of galaxies, the surface number, galax num surface number density of galaxies, and the number of redshift bins that, we, that we're using here. Okay. And by the way, uh, this is only for one bin of galaxy redshift. If you look at another one, you get this. You can get another power spectrum if it works. As we'll discuss later, uh, we can divide galaxies to redshift bins and do lensing with different, uh, different redshift bins, which gives us some kind of three-dimensional information. That's called tomographic weak lensing, which gives us more information. Again, um, we'll, we'll look at this in, in detail later, uh, but you can already play with the website and start plotting this if you're interested. OK, and then we can try going to the next level which, as I said, is a bit uh, slower. So we can try computing a uh, Fisher matrix, which is a forecast of the uh, errors that we expect for one of these future surveys. So let's select one um, forecast with Fisher matrices for lensing. Okay, And this is for the lensing power spectrum. So let's try that. That will take a bit longer. Ah. We have to give it the survey characteristic. So again, we can do a Fisher LSST and again LSST. And now it's calculating. This time it's going to take maybe a minute or so. So the way this Fisher uh, calculation works is that it's basically um, calculating the uh, minimum theoretical errors one can the, the theoretically minimum errors that we can expect on the cosmological parameters if the errors on the power spectrum are the one that I showed you before, on the lensing power spectrum. In order to do this, it needs to take derivative. So it computes the power spectrum for a fiducial cosmology. And then it uh, computes numerically derivative of this power spectrum in different directions in parameter space. So it looks like the change of the power spectrum, uh, lensing power spectrum, uh, if you change omega matter a little bit, if you change omega lambda a little bit, if you change sigma a little bit, in all the different directions, that gives. It also looks at changes in uh, in, in uh, sort of diagonal directions, if you wish. So it computes the whole matrix, and it uses this matrix then co convolve with the errors to um, give a covariance matrix for these parameters. So you see, it's prog the code is progressing. So that's why it's longer because it needs to calculate a lot of these power spectra uh, in all these directions. Can you specify some cosmological functions or the...? You can specify the cosmological parameters. Parameters. You can choose your central model. Uh, uh, and it was shown before. So you can change it interactively. You can choose whichever you want. You can have a, a one with a cosmological constant, one with an evolving W, anything you like. Uh, and it'll do it for that. OK, so here it repeats the, 
it, it shows us the different layers again, but if we go to cosmology errors, hopefully I haven't lost the network one more time. Looks like we did. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at this. Well, let's wait a one second. Okay, let me try this one, which is faster. Yeah, it looks like we lost the network. Okay. But basically, um, doesn't matter. You, you would get constraints or errors on these uh, parameters and ellipse in parameter space that shows the expected errors that we expect for this particular survey. Okay, and there's similar calculations for other probes. In here, we only have supernovae and baryonic acoustic oscillations. You can combine them, combine different surveys and so on. So it's quite convenient uh, for survey design. If you want to optimize a future survey, then you can modify it and see how you can minimize the errors, uh, which is something we've done uh, quite a lot in the past. So in this particular case, the code is described um, uh, in this paper that we wrote. Uh, but there's also a lot of online uh, documentation, so you can look at this paper. Maybe I'll write the, uh, the Astro PH number. So are you all familiar with Astro PH, which is a server for uh, preprints? It's also available in this journal, Astronomy and Astrophysics. But it's usually um, or archive, it's some kind of called. So if you, if, you, if you Google archive and type the number 08, uh, one zero dot where it's right here one two five uh, one two eight five then you can see the paper there's also another paper that describes the web interface uh, you can find it on the web on the web page also because we, we had quite a lot of development to get this web interface at the time uh, to, to work um, also, what you would find, unfortunately, as I said, I'm not sure um, we can actually find it if the network is not working. Let's see if I can get it from the cache of my computer. Oh, yeah, it's working now. This one doesn't work, but this one seems to be live. So if you go back to um, here, I think it's over here. No, one second. Yeah, if you go to cosmology resources here, you also have a lot of information about the different probes. For instance, if you click on gravitational lensing, then we have uh, put in a lot of information on gravitational lensing with tutorials. So this is about strong lensing, some of the things we discussed today. You know, give us some tutorial on strong lensing. Um, oops. Or similarly on weak lensing and so on. So um, the information is a little bit old because we are now switching to something else. But nevertheless, some of it is still uh, relevant and I think can help you uh, understand some of the material that, we've, that we're covering here. Okay, so you can start logging in and try to play with it. A lot of the quantities that, you've, uh, that Anjan described uh, are calculable like this, so you can see how they change as you change the cosmology. <coughs> For instance, somebody was asking whether we can measure W. Why don't you try you know, putting a W of minus 1 and a W of minus 1.2, see what difference it makes to different quantities. So this will be a change of 20% on W, and you'll see that it's, uh, it's relatively small. That's why you need surveys with very small errors. Then you can try to design your survey to make the errors small enough uh, for the survey to be sensitive to these, to these parameters. So you can, you can play with this. And as Anjan goes along and describes more and more parameters, you can try and see whether it's available. Um, now, the other. Before, before this, I should have said, I mean, why do we have codes like this? Maybe I should have started with this, right? So, uh, for instance, if you, if you take the, 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 the lectures by Anjan, you can see there's a lot of, uh, we can do a lot, there's a lot of quantities that are interesting. 
and you can write down uh, their properties and their equations. Now it turns out that in practice, except in a few uh, very rare limits, uh, one cannot compute these quantities uh, analytically. Okay? And, in, and in particular, when we start having uh, non-trivial values of uh, the cosmological parameters, then one cannot solve many of these equations analytically. So that's why there's a lot of codes available uh, for computing these uh, quantities numerically. That's the reason why, uh, why they're there. They can be tested using uh, the limits, um, uh, the limits where there's analytical results, but for most of the, the relevant cases, then we have to do it numerically. That's why a lot of people have uh, developed codes to do this, and ICOSMO is one example. Now, a code which is very um, commonly used for a microwave background calculation and beyond. So now they've included a lot of statistics, including also some of the lensing statistics. is called CAMB. Uh, it's currently, um, so you can find the website. It's called CAMB.info. I wish I had more blackboard space. So this is CAMB. CAMB. Dot info. Okay, and this is the code that is most uh, commonly used for a lot of cosmological calculation. This includes a much more um, uh, important calculation, which is a full uh, Boltzmann calculation. So it turns out if you want to compute all these quantities, like the matter power spectrum or the CMB power spectrum, precisely, uh, you need to solve a Boltzmann equation. I think Anjan will briefly discuss it. He won't have time to give you uh, a course on the full Boltzmann equation, but I think he will at least tell you what it is. Um, and, uh, and this is a large uh, set of couple differential equations need to be solved uh, forward in time with many, many variables. Uh, and, um, and this is a code that does it. There are several codes uh, on the market right now doing it, but this is the one which is uh, mostly, most commonly used. And you can look at it, you can download it uh, and install it and run it. Um, with this code, they also have um, uh, an accompanying code, which is called um, a Cosmo MC, which is a way of deriving a constraint from data sets. Uh, so it compares a data set to uh, the theory and make, put constraints on cosmological uh, parameters. And so it has a so-called Monte Carlo Markov chain uh, approach to, to do this. And again, you can, you can uh, download it and, and install it and, and use it. Um, now, th as far as I know, they don't directly have a web interface for this code, but uh, there's a, a site at NASA uh, which does this. So it's at lambda.gsfc.nasa.gov. Lambda.gsfc dot nasa.gov okay and it also uh, kind of similar to what I showed you um, you can uh, click on no not footprint that's not the way we want we want a web-based interface for cam and again you have uh, a menu like this that you can uh, you can click you can choose your model you can click on different options and then at the end it computes um, a uh, power spectrum for the cosmic microwave background, for instance, okay. by solving this Boltzmann equation. Okay, so that's also a, a nice uh, place to look. Um, another code, let me see if I can get it. Well, I can. Let me see. Unfortunately, on my screen, it's. Uh, well, I can show you this one. So we also have our own uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo. I mean, there are many Markov chain Monte Carlo solver. We have developed one at ETH, which may be of interest. It's called Cosmo Hammer, and I think some people here are using it. Uh, it uses a different algorithm for Monte Carlo Markov chain, which has advantages in particular for parallelization on in very large, uh, for very large number of parameters, uh, or for very large, um, when you want to use a very large number of uh, computing nodes, it parallelizes very nicely and scales very nicely. Uh, it gives you uh, kind of constraints like this. It's kind of described in this uh, in this paper here. 
So here you can just Google Cosmo Hammer and you'll find it. So if you're interested, I can tell you more about it. These, um, these uh, Monte Carlo schemes are very interesting. Um, they're very interesting problems, actually, how to, uh, how to optimize a, um, a code that uh, explores parameter space and draw constraints. The problem is that each, to each model requires a calculation which, is, which takes quite a while, uh, several seconds or more. And therefore, when you have a large parameter space to explore, it's very computationally intensive. So there are a lot of schemes to try to uh, make this as efficient as possible. Uh, another uh, cosmological code which is available is called class. And it does uh, things which are similar to um, what CAMP does, but it's a different code, independent. Uh, this one is written in C. Uh, CAMP is written in Fortran. So it's called classcode.net. And again, you can download it, install it uh, freely. There's documentation and so on. And they also have a Python interface. CAMB also has a Python interface as well. You can run it. And we're also running on a Python, a new Python package uh, to do some of, some of these calculations as well. <coughs> OK, so this is just an uh, a subset of the codes available. There, there are many more. Uh, as far as I know, CAMB and CLASS are the only ones which are currently maintained by the authors. There are also other codes that were developed in the past, but I don't think they're maintained anymore. Uh, they're nevertheless interesting. The first one to do very fast calculation was called CMB fast. Um, uh, but for the moment, these are the ones the, the one that are maintained, so you can, you can uh, look at it. And if you need to do a full Boltzmann calculation to do with a, for cosmic microwave background calculations in particular or other things, then you can also use these, use these codes. Any other, any questions on this? You are mentioning something about code, regarding Fortran, regarding this class, no? What do you mean? So class is in C, oh, okay. and uh, CAM is in Fortran, Fortran 90. Oh. So it also depends on which language you, you prefer. I mean, you don't, need to, you don't need to understand the language, you just need to install it. Uh, sometimes it's easier to install C. Uh, sometimes it's sometimes a little difficult to work with Fortran, but uh, now, uh, CAMB has been used a lot, so there's a lot of help to install that software. And people run it uh, worldwide. Uh, so it's a very robust now and very fast. Sorry? For a uh, class? I don't think so, but there's a Python interface. So if you click on it, you get the Python and you can plot things. But I don't think there's a graphical interface, as far as I know. I mean, like a web interface. Yeah. I don't think so. <coughs> 